Birthdays and anniversaries, they are markers of life, of time, of change. They bring families and friends together. They create memories, spark laughter, and sometimes bring tears to our eyes as we remember the past and consider what God has done. So what are your names? I am Doug Leppard. And I'm Becky Leppard. And how long have you been coming to UPC? Well, at the anniversary party will be 25 years. Wow. What is your name? My name is Becky Roby. And how long have you been coming to UPC? I have been coming to UPC since the spring of 1991. My name's Paul Wheatley, and I've been at UPC for 24 years. Hey, my name is Vic Godleski. I've been at UPC for about 24 and a half years. My name is Kathy Godleski. I'm married to Vic, and we've been here since the first year that UPC was in existence. 25 years ago, September 15, 1991 to be exact, University Presbyterian Church was born. That's when UPC held its first worship service at the Seventh-day Adventist Church on University Boulevard. That day of birth was the fruit of efforts that had begun months earlier. In March 1991, a young church planner named Mark Bates and his wife Tricia moved to East Orlando from Maitland. He and Tricia wanted to help bring the gospel of grace to an area of East Orlando poised for explosive growth. They started a Bible study in their home. Ten people showed up. The group prayed for God's blessing and direction as they planned for the first worship service. Volunteers made 14,000 phone calls, inviting them to try out the new church. Imagine their surprise when 253 people showed up for the church's first service. My first uh, remembrance of UBC is walking in and uh, they were scrambling. Uh, it's, uh, it was probably the second or third uh, service they ever had. And uh, this very young person walking up to me, found out later he's a pastor. Well, I just remember being so kind of impressed at how young the pastor was. In fact, we were kind of wondering whether he was even qualified in the role, given his age. Sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> oh, joking with our first elders, because as elders, none of them had gray hair except for Doug Le Leopard, which was pretty amusing to us. We were a very, very young church when we started. We had been actually going through a, a process of searching for churches and hadn't really found anything that really clicked with us and UBC just clicked immediately. We found it very refreshing. Um, the, uh, there was no apologies for preaching from God's Word. It just, it just, I mean, from the moment we stepped foot into the church, we loved it. My first memory was how everybody was so friendly, loving, inclusive. I think one of my first impressions was um, the the fact that um, Mark did preach from the Bible and for me when I was growing up I grew up in a congregation that could pick and choose whatever they would believe and um, the fact that the Bible was um, true and everything in it was just such a refreshing thing like you said it was refreshing to hear that this church knew what they believed in and um, and for me that's what I was looking for. Children and youth were also a priority. Scott Puckett came on board to lead the youth ministry in 1993 and Kathy Godlewski and Linda Wheatley joined staff to lead the children's ministry. About a year later Linda would become the children's ministry director. What are some of your favorite memories of UPC? Why don't you go first? <laughs> One of the things that I did enjoy was having youth group at our home with Scott and Laura Puckett and have the kids come piling in every, well, I can't remember what night it was, Tuesday or Wednesday night, and then um, being able to be a part of it. just loved the camaraderie of that. We had identical twin girls who were five, I believe, when we came 
to BC. And Amanda got married in the church uh, right there in the main sanctuary. And I just remember looking over when during the worship time, with her wedding dress on, standing next to Keith, her soon to be husband, and just praising God with her arms raised. And, and I, I think that's the biggest impact that really UPC has had is the impact on our children. UPC was officially organized in August 1994. The church's motto was transforming lives in a changing world. Elders and deacons were installed. A few months later, thanks to a generous donation, the church purchased 10 acres of land on Rouse Road. Groundbreaking was on August 11, 1996. A year later, UPC moved into its new facility. By this time, Scott Puckett had been ordained a UPC associate pastor. Soon he began his long tenure as worship director. Filling his shoes, Sean Peterson joined the staff in 2000 with the youth. The church started MANA, a ministry to the homeless community in East Orlando. Vision Awareness Sunday and the Christmas Coffee House became exciting events involving dozens of volunteers, musicians, and actors. In the year 2000, and again in 2001, the church purchased tracts of land next to the original 10, bringing the total acreage to 26. There is lots of room to grow and expand ministry. Mike Osborne joined the staff as associate pastor in 2001. A few years later, Scott Puckett and over 50 members of the church left to plant Christ Kingdom Church in Avalon, now thriving as they celebrate the church's 10th anniversary. Jonathan Noel was hired to take Scott's place as director of worship and arts. In late 2004, UPC erected a new worship center capable of seating nearly 1,000 people. In 2007, after 16 years as pastor of UPC, Mark Bates accepted a call to Village 7 Presbyterian Church in Colorado Springs. Mike Osborne served as interim pastor until he was called to be the new senior pastor in 2008. Meanwhile, a host of seminary students led the church's youth, college, and young adult ministries. Among them were Seth Hammond and Matt Ryman, later ordained as associate pastors. In 2013, UPC's pastoral staff did something that rarely has been tried, much less successfully. Senior Pastor Mike and Youth Pastor Matt traded places. Desiring for UPC to reach a younger demographic, Mike asked the church to call him as associate pastor and Matt as the new senior pastor. After several months of meetings and a congregational vote, the transition was complete and has been successful. Our faith really needed to be reformed. Uh, not so much from the a Presbyterian format, just so we grew up in the church and we needed to take the next steps of faith. And so coming to UPC really got us moving in that direction. It really meant salvation for my family. I think because of the fact that we were un, kind of unchurched um, before we came to UPC, just being part of a community that loved us so well and, and would always point us to the gospel was huge. Well, for me personally, uh, we chose UPC because it was relatively close to our house and we wanted to be very involved in a church. And it turned out to be a total family affair. To help the church grow, the session hired UPC's first pastor of outreach, Michael Hart, and the director of Hispanic Ministries, Clint Delaplane. In 2004, UPC's circle of influence in East Orlando suddenly expanded. Christ Community Church of Lake Nona unexpectedly found itself without a pastor. UPC stepped in to provide leadership. In 2014, UPC became one church in two places, UPC Orlando on Rouse Road and UPC Lake Nona. That congregation meets for Sunday worship in Pioneer's facility on Narcusi Road under Pastor B.J. Milgate. God-centered worship has always been a priority. Thanks to the talents of Scott Puckett, Jonathan Noel, David Pete, Jack Barre, and countless musicians, singers, technicians, and support staff, UPC has been blessed with a dynamic worship ministry. Right now, the verse that means the most to me is a verse in John 6, 29. 
that says that the work of God is to believe in Him who He sent. And I feel like I've been surrounded by people who have helped me to keep believing. I feel like it comes from the leadership. I feel like, like it's just woven into the community at UPC. Somehow it's in our structure that we're here to support and love each other and hold on to each other, especially in times when faith is hard. Throughout its 25-year history, UPC has faced many challenges and changes. Time and time again, God has continued to provide people, staff, vision, and finances in amazing ways. But one thing has remained the same, a commitment to the gospel of God's unchanging grace. The original vision for transforming lives in a changing world is still evident as UPC moves forward to making disciples of all nations. Yeah, I, I would recommend that um, anyone looking for a church or coming to visit UPC, that they would um, uh, try to get involved, to take part in a life group, um, or find ways that they could serve using their gifts. We got so much more out of it by what we put into it. And, you know, long-term friends, impact to our family, our kids got to see ministry in action. I'd say this church is a great place to be involved, that God has been working for 25 years and He's done it through people who have done small, amazing things. And so nothing you can do is too small, but doing nothing um, is going to make you miss out on a whole bunch. What an amazing thing to celebrate. 25 years of God's faithfulness to UPC. It's just a picture of the faithfulness that we will experience from Him forever. Happy anniversary, UPC. I need to turn the air on in this office. Yeah. This is not my favorite memory. <laughs> <laughs> what is your least favorite memory of UPC? Right now. Right now. No air conditioning being videotaped. <laughs>